Hi guys and welcome to this training session where we're going to explore Drayton's range of motorised valves as well as some best practice tips and tricks to make installation as simple as possible. Motorised valves are used on heating systems to manage flow into different circuits and thereby facilitate independent control of heating and hot water. There are two parts to these, the valve body that fits onto the pipework and the electronic actuator that sits on top and drives the internal shaped paddle. The valve bodies come in two configurations, two port and three port. The type of valve fitted determines the type of heating system. Here we have a three port body and a mid position actuator and this is known as a biflow or Y plan system. The movement of the actuator is influenced by the outputs of the time and temperature controls also fitted to the heating system. The valve is fitted after the pump and allows for independent demand of hot water and central heating by opening and closing the relevant ports. This actuator can also sit in the mid position, meaning all ports are open. If your system uses two port valves, you'll usually have more than one, as each circuit will have its own. This type of system is known as a twin zone or S-plan. These valves can be either open or closed and again are influenced by the outputs from the time and temperature controls also on the heating system. The supply from the boiler is split to feed each valve body and independent control of each circuit is achieved by opening and closing the relevant valve using the system controls. Twin zone or S-plan systems are more versatile as you can add extra zones by adding more two port valves with their associated time and temperature controls to split heating circuits or to add single zone wet underfloor heating. Drayton manufactured two port and three port motorised valves designed to fit on 22mm and 28mm copper with compression fittings. The valve bodies and actuators can be purchased in packs of head and body or as separate to make replacing as cost effective and easy as possible. One of the most important features of the Drayton motorised valves is the snap-on actuators. This makes installation much easier as the head can be detached and moved out of the way. It also makes replacing less of a hassle as you don't need to drain down the system if only a replacement actuator is required. The actuators provide 100% tight shut-off thanks to the internal synchronous motor and the spring return. The manual lever and position indicator really assist with fault finding as you can immediately identify what position the valve is in. To maximise service life, the synchronous motor is replaceable and all of the actuators follow industry standard wiring. Here we have a pack comprising of a ZA5 actuator with 22mm two port body. In the box you'll also get a set of fitting and wiring instructions along with the necessary compression fittings. The 28mm pack version of Drayton's 2 port is supplied with a ZA6 actuator. As well as being larger, the 28mm body has female threads and male locking nuts. The ZA5 is a 5 wire actuator and the ZA6 has an extra white wire making it a 6 wire actuator. These are interchangeable provided the extra wire is not being used as is rarely the case. On the underside of the body, the ports are stamped A and B with the flow direction to be in on A and out on B. The port designation is diametrically opposed to the position indicator on the actuator so always use the valve body markings when piping up. For low voltage applications there is the ZA5A and the ZA6A which are supplied as actuator only but are fitted with 24 volt synchronous motors. The end switch contacts in all versions are volt free. Next we have the MA1 which is also available as a pack with 22mm and 28mm 3 port bodies. The compression nut arrangement with the female threads is the same on the three ports as it is the two ports and all compression fittings are supplied in the box. Underneath the body the ports are designated A and B with port AB being the feed from the pump. The supply needs to be connected to the AB port whilst heating and hot water are piped to ports A and B respectively. Remember these actuators can hold the mid position to open all ports when both circuits are demanding. 
This actuator is also a 5 wire, but has a white wire instead of the brown found on a zone valve. The three-port body can also be used as a diverter valve when fitted with the ZA3 actuator. This means your system designation would change to a hot water or central heating priority system. All actuators are interchangeable, so a ZA5 or ZA6 actuator could be used with a three-port body to create a diverter with the switch wires not being used. Before fitting to the pipework, remove the actuator by pressing in the square button and set aside to prevent damage. The copper pipe needs to be cut squarely and free from burrs before locking nuts and olives are assembled. For 22mm bodies, the pipe insertion into the valve should be between 10mm and 15mm. For 28mm bodies, the insertion should be 22mm to 25mm. All motorised valves should be fitted with a minimum of 1 metre's length of pipework from the pump and also located in an area that does not exceed 52 degrees Celsius. To install the actuator on the body and for commissioning the system, the actuator needs to be locked into the vent and fill position by moving the lever over and pressing into the casing. When the system is ready to be tested, the lever can be unlocked by manually moving the lever or driving the actuator its full travel. Here I'm going to power up each of the Drayton actuators to show correct operation, starting with the ZA3. This is simple, neutral and earth connected to their respective terminals, and when the brown wire is energised, the actuator moves from position A to position B. When de-energised, it returns to position A. The ZA5 is the same, however it also has two extra switch wires. In the A position, there is open circuit between orange and grey. In the B position, the microswitch closes and there is continuity between orange and grey. The ZA6 follows the same logic, with the brown wire driving the motor, however there's an additional white wire. This is a normally closed contact with respect to the orange wire. In the A position, there is continuity between orange and white, but open circuit between orange and grey. When the actuator completes its travel to the B position, continuity is lost between orange and white, but is gained between orange and grey. From this you can see that the switch contacts are volt-free and not influenced by the mains voltage on the brown wire used to drive the motor. The MA1 is slightly different as it's not volt-free as there is no access to the switch common. Neutral and earth are connected as normal and if you energise only the white wire the valve will move to the mid position. The orange wire will remain dead. When energising both the white and grey together, the white wire will cause the actuator to move to the mid position as before, but now, because the grey wire is also live, the actuator will continue to travel over to the H position for central heating. The orange wire at this point will become live. With the actuator in the H position, if the white wire goes dead, the valve will stay in the H position, but the orange wire will also go dead. De-energising the valve will cause the spring to return to the W position. This table is really useful when fault finding to understand the expected voltages on each wire under different conditions. By removing the cover you can see the synchronous motor that can be removed by undoing two screws. The wires have spade connectors so can easily be removed should a replacement motor be required. All of the Drayton motorised valve actuators are Class 1 products, so it is important that they are earthed due to the internal metallic components. Here I have disassembled a ZA5 and you can see the small microswitch that the grey and orange wires are connected to, which is actuated by a cam when the valve is driven to the B position. To finish, here is some useful information for when you're specifying Two really important details here are the maximum water temperature of 93 degrees Celsius and the maximum current rating of the microswitch of 3 amps resistive and 1 amp inductive. Thanks for watching this training video and if you need any more information or resources head over to our website draytoncontrols.co.uk.